Did Albert Einstein, the genius behind the theory of relativity, really build the atomic bomb? Or is there more to the story? Picture this, a man synonymous with brilliance, a name that's become a byword for genius. Now picture an atomic bomb, a weapon of mass destruction that has forever changed the course of history. Could these two seemingly disparate entities be linked? It's a common misconception that Einstein, the acclaimed physicist, was the architect of this devastating weapon. But is this really true? Or have the threads of history woven a more complex tapestry that belies this popular belief? The reality behind Einstein's involvement in the creation of the atomic bomb might just surprise you, shattering long-held assumptions and shedding new light on the man behind the legend. So buckle up, history buffs, as we delve into the fascinating enigma that is Albert Einstein. Join us as we explore the true history of Einstein's role in developing the atomic bomb. The story begins in 1939, when Einstein pens a letter to President Roosevelt. The world was teetering on the precipice of a second global conflict, with the growing menace of Nazi Germany casting a long and ominous shadow. Amidst this volatile backdrop, two brilliant minds, Albert Einstein and physicist Leo Szilard, joined forces to craft a letter that would shake the foundations of modern warfare. The letter was not a casual correspondence, but a dire warning, a clarion call to action. It detailed the potential of Nazi Germany creating an atomic bomb, a weapon of unfathomable power, one that could change the tide of the impending war. The duo painted a vivid picture of the horrors that would unfold if this weapon fell into the wrong hands. Einstein and Szilard weren't merely hypothesizing. The science was there, the theory was sound. Split an atom and you unleash a force that could level cities. They knew it was possible and they feared the Nazis were on the brink of realizing it too. But this was not a race they wanted to win. Their letter was a plea for sanity, a desperate call to prevent the unthinkable. They urged President Roosevelt to take the threat seriously and to mobilize the scientific community to ensure the United States was not left defenseless against this new form of warfare. The political climate was tense, the stakes higher than they had ever been. The world was on a knife edge, and this letter, this warning, was tossed into the fray. It was a gamble, a roll of the dice in the high-stakes game of international politics and war, and so the letter was sent. A message in a bottle cast into the turbulent seas of global conflict. It was a plea from two men who understood the devastating potential of the science they had helped to pioneer. This letter, unbeknownst to Einstein, would have far-reaching consequences. Little did he know, the ripples of this act would echo through the corridors of history, shaping the world as we know it today. In response to Einstein's letter, the US government launches the Manhattan Project. Now, the Manhattan Project wasn't your ordinary science fair experiment. This was a colossal endeavor, a secret wartime project with a singular goal, to develop the world's first atomic bomb. Imagine scientists from all walks of life converging in the isolated mesas of New Mexico, the laboratories of the University of Chicago, and the factories of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. They were physicists, chemists, engineers, all working in concert, racing against time and the fear of the enemy beating them to the punch. Now, you might be wondering, where does our dear friend Einstein fit into all of this? Well, here's the twist. Despite his letter setting the wheels in motion, Einstein's direct involvement in the Manhattan Project was, in fact, quite limited. Yes, you heard it right. The man who first alerted the US government about the potential of atomic weapons the man whose famous equation E E to M C 2 laid the theoretical groundwork for the bomb was not part of the team that built it. Einstein was a pacifist at heart, and his motivations for writing the letter to President Roosevelt were rooted in a desperate hope to deter a global catastrophe. He hoped that the mere possibility of such a weapon existing would be enough to prevent its use. So, if Einstein didn't directly work on the bomb, why is he often associated with it? It's a question that sparked countless debates and the answer might surprise you. But we'll delve into that in our next segment. Stay tuned. 1945, two Japanese cities bear the brunt of Einstein's unintended legacy. As World War II reached its cataclysmic climax, the world witnessed a spectacle unlike any other. In August of that year, 
The cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were engulfed in a monstrous mushroom cloud, a terrifying testament to mankind's newfound power. These were the first and so far the only instances of nuclear weapons used in warfare, and the aftermath was nothing short of devastating. In the blink of an eye, hundreds of thousands of lives were extinguished. Buildings were leveled, and those who survived the initial blast were left to grapple with the lingering effects of radiation. The world was left to grapple with the reality of a weapon that could obliterate cities in a heartbeat. Amidst this chaos and destruction, Albert Einstein, the man whose name was inextricably linked with the creation of this devastating weapon, grappled with his own turmoil. Despite having urged the US to build the weapon as a deterrent against Nazi Germany, Einstein was confronted with the horrific consequences of his scientific discoveries. The sight of the mushroom cloud rising over Nagasaki was a stark and haunting reminder of his role in this new era of warfare. But from this devastation, Einstein found a new purpose. He became a vocal advocate for a global ban on nuclear weapons, using his influence to warn of the dangers of nuclear proliferation. His was a voice of reason amidst the madness, a beacon of hope in a world shadowed by the threat of nuclear annihilation. Yet despite his best efforts, the genie was out of the bottle. The nuclear age had begun, and with it came a new set of challenges and ethical dilemmas for the world to grapple with. Einstein, the man who had unlocked the secrets of the atom, was left to ponder the moral implications of his scientific breakthroughs. Einstein's scientific discoveries had led to unimaginable destruction. Yet, it's in the aftermath of this destruction that Einstein's true legacy is revealed, not as the father of the atomic bomb, but as a champion for peace and disarmament in a world teetering on the brink of nuclear catastrophe. Einstein, the pacifist, found himself grappling with the moral implications of his scientific discoveries. A man who spent his life unraveling the mysteries of the universe, Albert Einstein, was suddenly confronted with the reality of his work's deadly potential. The atomic bomb, a creation born of his genius, was a far cry from his dreams of a peaceful world. In the aftermath of the devastation in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Einstein's world shifted on its axis. His work, once a beacon of human achievement, had been used to create a weapon of unparalleled destruction. Despite having urged the United States to build this weapon, Einstein was tormented by the consequences. His letter to President Roosevelt had been intended as a warning, a plea to prevent the horrors of a Nazi atomic bomb. Yet, the creation of this weapon of mass destruction was a Pandora's box that, once opened, could not be closed again. But Einstein was not one to wallow in regret. Instead, he transformed his remorse into action, becoming a vocal advocate for a global ban on nuclear weapons. He campaigned tirelessly for peace, using his influence to promote disarmament and international cooperation. The man who had inadvertently helped unleash the destructive power of the atom now sought to harness its potential for the benefit of mankind. Einstein's later life was a testament to his unwavering commitment to peace. Despite the weight of his role in the atomic bomb's creation, he strived to ensure that such a catastrophe would never occur again. His efforts, though sometimes met with resistance, served as a beacon of hope in a world still reeling from the horrors of war. In the end, Einstein's legacy is a complex one. He was a man of science, whose discoveries transformed our understanding of the universe. Yet he was also a man of peace, who spent his later years fighting for a world free from the shadow of nuclear weapons. Einstein's story serves as a stark reminder of the power and potential peril of scientific discovery. So did Einstein build the atomic bomb? The answer isn't as straightforward as it seems. It's important to consider the nuances of Einstein's involvement. While he did pen the letter that ignited the Manhattan Project, his role was more of a catalyst than a hands-on engineer. Einstein's genius laid the groundwork for understanding atomic energy, but he was not directly involved in the bomb's creation. His letter to President Roosevelt was a cautionary tale, warning about the potential of Nazi Germany harnessing atomic power for destructive purposes. However, this correspondence led to a series of events that birthed an era of nuclear weapons and warfare. 
In essence, Einstein's role was akin to that of someone who inadvertently sets off a domino effect. His intention was to prevent the weaponization of his scientific discoveries, yet his warnings inadvertently led to the very thing he sought to prevent. Einstein's letter to Roosevelt sparked the chain of events that led to the atomic bomb, but the father of the atomic bomb he certainly was not.